Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the official SAT study guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. This book must always be in front of you as you are doing the work with me. Today, We'll do some problem that you will find on page number 347. Let's turn to it. Page 347, problem number, problem number 20 is the first one. As you can see, the problem is already on the blackboard. Let's, let's, see what, what, let's see what it says. If after having watched this entire video, you found it helpful, you find it helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, you can always get hold of me by sending me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Let's take a look at what it says. Number 20. It says that the maximum of 25 positive integers is 84. So we have a series of 25 positive integers, a data set of 25 entries. They are all positive integers. And the maximum among them is number 84, right there. Then it goes on to say, doesn't go, then it goes on to say that we make one more entry to the data set. The 26th entry is added. And we are told exactly what the 26th entry is. 26th entry is 96. As you can see, 96 is, 96 is 12 more than that. So the question simply is, which of the following measures which of the following measures must be 12 more than the original data set? And of course we have four answer choices and our job is to find which one will increase by exactly 20. The question here is not which of the following will be affected or which of the following will increase. They are saying which of the following must have increased by exactly 12. Let's see the first one. First one says mean. What's going on with the mean is that Whatever the old mean was, whatever the old mean was, since you are adding a number that is 12 more than, than the, the highest number, or actually it's not 12 more than the last mean. Actually, we can't, even, we can't even exactly tell how much the mean is going to be affected, but we do know mean will be affected, mean will go up, average will go up, because the highest number that we had before was 84, you are adding 96, so the mean will go up, but the mean is not going to go up by 12. It's not going to go up by 12. So the, the answer is mean will be affected, but it won't go up by 12. What about median? Same thing is going on here. Median, median will be affected. How much it will be affected, we do not know, but it's not going to go, go up anywhere, anywhere 12. So what's going to happen with median is that before, before we had 25 entries. So we had 13 entries, uh, rather 12 entries here. Then we have 12 entries here, and the 13th entry, that was our median before. This was before. As we, as we add one more entry, now we have 26 entries, which means we have 13 over here, 13 over here, 13 entries here, 13 entries here. You see, 12 entries and 12 entries is 24, and this is the 25th entry, which is right in the middle. Now, as we add one more entry, we have 26 observation, so we have 13 over here, 13 over here, the median now, the median now is going to be the average, is going to be the average of the middle two numbers, which is the 13th entry and the 14th entry. N13 and N14, you take the average of the two, and that's going to be the median. So median will be affected, but it will not go up anywhere near, anywhere by 12. It will go up, but not, but not by 12. So that's wrong. The answer B is wrong. C says, well, C says something, we won't worry about C, and D says standard deviation. And again, the answer is yes, standard deviation is affected. It is affected. But, it does not go up by 12. Standard deviation is affected because the standard deviation measures the deviation from the mean. And of course, this last entry that we made, 96, is, is, is 12 more than the highest entry that we had before. It deviates quite a lot from the, for the, from the new mean. So it will raise this standard deviation just by a little bit, but it's not going to raise it by 12. What is going to go up by exactly 12? What is going to go up by exactly 12 is the range. Range is going to go up exactly by 12. The new range is exactly 12 more than the old range. Let me show it to you on the top here. Here is the old one, old range. So we have the minimum entry, whatever the minimum entry was, all the way up to 84. 
the difference between the two was the range. The new range, as we add 96 as the 26th entry, the minimum does not change. The lowest, lowest entry that we had in the data is still the same. So it's, it's still there, but now it's going to go all the way up to 96. The range goes up by exactly 12 because we are adding one more entry, which is 12 more than the highest entry that we had before. I think we talked too much about it. Number 21. Number 21. Number 21 says that uh, we have to mix X milliliter, X milliliter of 10% saline solution with Y milliliter of 20% saline solution to create a mixture that is 18%. So we're gonna we're gonna mix the weaker solution, weaker concentration 10%, with the stronger concentration which is 20%, and we want the final product, the final mixture to be 18% strong. You can think of it in terms of cocktail, you can think of it in terms of orange juice and some other juice, you, whatever, whatever you want to think of. Do you understand? And here's the question. The question is, we are adding 100 milliliter of 20% as use. The question is, how many milliliter of 10% is needed? That's all. How many, how many of 10% that we needed? And therefore the equation is very simple. We have, let's say, X milliliter of 10% to which we are adding Y milliliter of 20% and the final product has to be 18%. But the 18% that we have, how much do we have? How much solution do we have? Well, we have X milliliter of this one and my milliliter, my milliliter of this one. There you go. Very simple, very straightforward, and we are told how much we have here. We have 100 milliliter of 20%. 20% was Y. There you go. So this is 20, 100 milliliter. This is 20% times 100. That's how much Y we have. And we have 10, we're mixing 10% of X. And we want 18% of X plus Y, but Y is 100. There you go. This is the equation we have to solve. Let's do it on the top. Let's do it on the top. Now, if you want, I can rewrite the whole thing or I can do it here. You see, this word percent that we see there, this word percent that we see there, this symbol of percent. Percent means, what does percent mean? Percent, percent means out of 100. So if you wanted to write, if you wanted to write 10% as a fraction, it would be 10 over 100. 20% would be 20 over 100. Not this 100, but 20 over 100. 18% is written as 18 over 100. So this entire thing is 10 over 100, 20 over 100, 18 over 100. And if you were to multi multiply the entire equation by 100, if you were to multiply the entire equation by 100, the percentage sign drops out. There we go. It just drops out. It plays no role because it appears everywhere. It appears with every single term. And what we are left with here is this part. 10x plus 200 times 100. Or is it 200 or 20? It's 20, not 200. It's 20, 20%. 20 times 100 has to equal 18 times x plus 100. So far so good. Let's open this guy up. So we get 18x plus 18 times 100. Stay with, stay with, me, stay with me in the story, okay? So here we're going to start flip-flopping. Here we have 18x, here we have 10x. Let's subtract 10x from both sides. So in other words, we're going to bring 10x over here. So we end up with 8x. And after we have done that, this guy is, is over here. So on this side, we're left with 20 times 100. 20 times 100. Let's subtract 18 times 100. Let's subtract 18 times 100 from both sides. If we do that, we'll end up with 20 times 100 minus 18 times 100. 20 times 100 minus 18 times 100. 
ordinarily, if I were doing it by myself, I wouldn't have written it down. You should simply realize that if you have 20 of 2100, think of this $100 bills. If you have $2,100 bills, and if you give $1,800 $1, bill to somebody, you're left with $200 bills. So what this is left with is 2 times 100. We don't have to waste our time opening the whole thing and doing it out. It's just a waste of time. Let's continue. We're almost there. And that is eight. That is 8x. That is 8x. If we divide both sides by 8, if we divide both sides by 8, we'll have our x that we're looking for. Let's do that then, shall we? We're almost there. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. Let's divide top, well, let's, let's, divide, let's do the 2 first. Let's divide this top and bottom by 2 and this becomes 4. And let's divide top and bottom by 4 because we know 4 fives are 25. 25 times 4 is, 25 times 4 is 100. So if we divide top and bottom by 4, it becomes 25. There you go. X equals 25. The question was, how many milliliter of, of a solution, X solution, should, how many milliliter of 10% solution should we mix to the 20% solution? The answer is we should meet, mix 25 milliliter of 10% with the 100 milliliter of 20% and the result we will have it will be a solution that is 18% strong. 22 22 So here we are told that first year first year we have 30 and then each year after the first year we double the previous number. Each year after the first year we double the previous number. What it is that we have 30 of the first year you can read the bloody thing yourself and, and, and satisfy your curiosity but it really doesn't matter what we have all it matters is the math. So the first year we have 30 Let's call this the, the starting point, the T naught. When we say second year, actually it's the beginning of the second year, the end of the first year. So the beginning of the second year, end of the first year, whatever, however you want to see it, at T1, we'll have, it doubles every year. Whatever number that we started out with, it doubles every year. So we'll have 2 times 30. Are you with me? The following year, when, you say, when we say T2, it just signifies the end of the second year, beginning of the third year. At the end of the second year, when we started, we're going to have 2 times the amount that we had before, which is this guy. 2 times 30. And it goes on and on forever. 2 times, two times twi double the amount that we had previous year, which is 2 times 2 times 30, can simply be written as 2 squared 30. Are you with me? 2 squared 30. Let me rewrite this too. Two times 30 can certainly be written as 2 raised to 1 times 30. And 30 by itself can certainly be written as 2 raised to 0 times 30. Do you see the pattern? 30 times 2 raised to 0 for 0 period. 30 times 2 raised to 1, 30 times 2 raised to 2, 30 times 2 raised to 3, and so on and so forth. So the the, for the nth year, for the nth year, we'll have the number that we started out with 30 times 2 raised to n. And this is known as, well, let's look at the answer choices. We're making it too much fuss about it. Answer choice A says decreasing linear. It is not linear. Linear function is a constant slope. It increases by the same times, two times or three times or five times, here it's doubling, it is an exponential figure, ex exponential function. It is not linear and it's certainly not decreasing, it's certainly not decreasing because numbers are going up, that's just silly. B says increasing linear, again it's not linear, it is exponential. C says decreasing exponential, no it's not decreasing, it is going up, the answer is D. D says increasing exponential function. As you can see, oh, I erased the bloody thing, didn't I? It was exponential. It was, it was an exponential function, because what it looks like is 2 raised to 0 times 30, 
uh, 2 raised to 1 times 30, 2 raised to 2 times 30, and so on and so forth. And finally, 2 raised to n times 30 for the nth period. The answer is D. Twenty-three. Twenty-three says... Ah, twenty-three is a little bit more involved. Twenty-three is a little bit more involved, it's going to take some work. It says we are given... We are given... Coordinates... Of... Three points, such as this one, the x and y coordinate of three points, a is zero, three a minus a, the y coordinate is negative a, x coordinate of the third point is five a, and the y coordinate is negative two a. And we are told that this is a linear relationship. We are told that. It says in the problem that it's a linear relationship. Now the fact that they tell us that it's a really linear relationship that in, then in itself implies that the slope has to be constant. What they're looking for here is the equation of the, of the, of the, of the line that satisfies these three points. And it's the equation of a line, equation of a line that will go through these three points. Now instead of keep talking instead of keep talking about this term as these three points and this point and not that point and this point, let's give them name, let's christen them. I'm gonna call them so let's give this point some names. Let's call them A, point A, point B, point C, so we know what we're talking about, okay? Yesterday, since I just uh, use a vocab word, yesterday we came across a word in our lecture, cognizant which we learn on day number 42. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, just type in, just search for Keshvani SAT vocabulary words, day 42, and you'll learn that word. Let's learn one more word, that one word that we just used. I said, let's christen them, let's christen these points. And let's see if I can very quickly find out when we learned it. If not, we'll move on. Oh, there we go, day number 63. Day 63. Let's christen these points, let's give them names. So we're going to call them A, B, and C. So the slope is constant. What we're trying to find out here is the equation of a line that goes through these three points. And the tool that we're going to use, the method that we're going to use, the format that we're going to use for the equation of the line is what is known as slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form looks something like this. y equals equal to mx plus b. And here's how the story is going to unfold. Here's how the story is going to unfold. First, we have to figure out the slope, which is very easy. We can find out the slope by using any one. Uh, we can find out the slope by using any two of these points, not any one, obviously. Any pair of points. We can either use a, b to find the slope, we can either use AC to find the slope, or we can use the BC to find the slope. It makes no difference. We can pick any two points and find the slope. Let's use A to B. It seems logical. We're just going to use A to B. Do you understand? Let's find the slope. Now, once we have the slope, once we have the slope, we can put it in this equation right here, and then we then the next step will be we'll take one of these one of these points, either A or B or C. The coordinates of these points, whichever points we pick, whether we pick A, B, or C, the x coordinate and the y coordinate has to satisfy this, this equation. So we're going to substitute in place of x. Let's say, for example, we use point A. We're going to put A, this A, we're going to use A for x and 0 for zero for y. We will have the value of m already, and then we can solve the intercept. And once we have the value of the intercept, we will have the equation. That's how it's going to go. Let's begin. Let's find the slope. OK? We'll use. Let's use, let's use A to B. So the slope, we know, is this change in Y over the change in X. This is where we have to pay attention, because it's very easy to make a mistake. Okay, we're looking for change in Y. We're going from A to B. A to B. B is our ending point. The Y coordinate is negative A minus 
the Y coordinate here. Oh, I just made a mistake. That's not the Y coordinate. I almost messed it up. Minus A and then this Y coordinate of point A. Point B and point A. Negative A minus a 0. And now you have to be consistent. If you're going to use B minus A, then this has to be B minus A. You either go from B to A or A to B. You cannot mix it up. So since I use negative A first, I have to use the X coordinate here. 3A minus the X coordinate of this point. That's all. Let's simplify it. So we end up with negative A minus 0 is just a negative A. 3A minus A is just 2A. You see what's going on here? A is going to drop out. And it turns out that the slope is simply minus minus 1 over 2. The slope is negative half. Now that we have the slope, we're going to use the equation y equal to mx plus b and find out the value of b, the intercept. y is equal to mx plus b. At this point we have a choice. Before we would be using the slope, we have to use a pair of points, obviously, either AB or AC or, or BC. Here we have three points. All of those three points go, go through the line. They lie on the line, which means the coordinates of all of these points must satisfy this equation. You can pick any one of them. And just always pick the one that gives you the least amount of math mathematics, least amount of work. Here, since I see zero, it's a lot, it's a lot less work than using those. I'm going to use point A. In point A, the x coordinate is A. Let's substitute here. In point A, the y coordinate is 0. Let's substitute here. M, we already know what that is. It's negative 1 half. And now we can solve for B. Let's do that, shall we? This is 0. This is negative 1 half. Let's bring, let's bring negative 1 half on this side and we are done. B must equal positive A. Positive 1 half A. To solve this equation for B. There you go, we know, we know the B, we know the slope, we found our slope to be negative one half, I think it was. Negative one half. And now we can give them the equation that they're looking for. As I said, it, it does require a little bit of work. And, that, and that, that in itself should not be a surprise to us that this requires a little bit of work, because as we get higher in the number, the problems become more difficult. But we're almost there. So the slope intercept form is y is equal to mx plus b. So y is equal to m, which is negative one half, times x plus b, which is positive half. Since we see two at the bottom, we see two at the bottom. Let's multiply the entire side, entire equation by two. Multiply the entire equation by 2, this will become 2y, and this 2 will disappear. That was the whole point, and we'll end up with negative 1, negative 1 times x, which is just negative x, plus 1 times b, it's just b. And we want mx plus b. This is the format we want. y equals mx plus b. This is the format we're looking for. We're going to present this thing, we're going to solve this thing in terms of y. Since, since this is 2y, oh, this was already here. Let's see what it is that we need. Well, actually, that's not the format they want. The format that they want is simple x and y on one side. So we're going to have to keep on going. So that's what you have to do at this point. At this point, you have to look at the answer choice to see what kind of format that they have in the answer choice and we just have to match it. If you wanted a slope intercept format, that's already there. I wasn't thinking. So let's bring, that's all we have to do. We just bring the x to that side and we are done. Just bring x to this side, so it becomes x plus 2y equals b. And this is what they're looking for. This is what they're looking for, and just pick the one that matches that thing, which is answer choice A. And that was the end of that page. I'm not going to start a new page today. We'll meet again tomorrow. We'll pick up from the next page. We'll pick up from where we left off. All right. If you wish to get hold of me, as I said, send me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Explain to me in the email what it is that you're looking for that you're looking for a tutoring, whether you're looking for the help in math or English grammar, which is the writing part, or vocabulary, whatever it is that you need help with. Alright, bye now.